All right, boy, do I have a real treat for everybody. So I know that there's been issues with these Kenwood model radios. I have another one here. This one actually is, uh, where is it, over here, it's HDMI. It's one of those HDMI radios. Anyway, get to my point here. So these radios have a common issue where they just have a black screen. They stop working. Uh, there's just a little red light that turns on. For example, I am going to plug in and hook up this one. For demonstration purposes. So you get a radio like this, a little red light, not responsive. My finger doesn't fit in there, but you know, you try to do the reset thing, nothing happens, nothing works. So inevitably you just end up with a dead radio, nothing happens. All right. So I'll power this one down. Just so you know, as I'm talking to you about all this, both these radios had the same exact issue. Red light, red light, no response from buttons, no response from buttons, nothing. So I took both of them apart and was really trying to figure things out. So I posted on an online forum about you know, what could, a problem, what could the problem possibly be? <clears throat> and I wish I still had this one apart so that I could show you exactly. I might do another video with this one just to get it, um, just to show people how to do this. Because I did it with this one and I was blown away. All right. So let me first start off by... Looking at oh, such a small connection here to try to make. Hold on. Okay, so red light on, and it's on. Now. I, I, I was completely not expecting this to work, yet it did. Does anybody watching this video remember at all, back in the day, the Xbox 360 Red Ring of Death? Back in the day, the Red, X, the Red Ring of Death on the Xbox 360, there was a fix on there that... You know, obviously wasn't a good fix. It wasn't a permanent fix. But it, you know, did get things going for the time being. Uh, you know, if you want to play some more games and so you get another system or whatever. Well, inevitably, what did you have to do? You had to take the Xbox apart. You had to take the motherboard out. You had to do what was called a reflow. So you take your heat gun and you make some passes over the board. You get it nice and warm. And then you focus on your processor chip and get it really, really hot to try to, you know, reconnect the solder joints. The reason I even came up with this thought and idea is um, the online forum that I was uh, a part of, and I asked anybody if they had any ideas on fixing this problem. The one guy said something about the sister board getting way too hot and one of the chips shorting out, the IC500 chip. And I said, okay. So I took the board out and I looked around. I found the IC500 chip underneath. It's a long square Toshiba chip. <clears throat> so I did a reflow. This is my result from my reflow. Now, I haven't actually tried to do any set up here. Oh, and it's touch screen. Nice. I haven't even messed with this yet. I literally just got it working and I was like, I have to 
Wow. <laughs> I know I sound corny right now, but I, I'm just blown away that this is working. I, I am ecstatic. Anyway, so I refloated the chip. I let it cool off. I put it back in the unit for shits and giggles. I plugged it in. I hooked it up. This is what I got. I am so happy right now. Anybody who's saying that you have to buy a new sister board and they're not available, try a reflow. Do it for a while. Don't just, you know, warm up the board a little bit and let it go. Do a real reflow. Get this thing hot. Even pull the chip off the board if you have to and put it back on. You'll like the results.